You know, uh, it's very clear. God's mind is that we come into God's fullest. So, we see that the permission of God is that we are going to be in the fullest. You know, it you know, comes into God's highest. Come into God's greatest thought for His people. Yes. 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 That they may occupy the high places in Christ Jesus. That they may, in a right sense, be in an exalted place as a people. <coughs> that is God's mind. Are you with us? Are you understanding? Especially all those who are seated at the back. Yes. Yes. I would like to say that again. And when you talk about coming into that higher place, and look into it more by the Spirit, it, it, it says, it means that the Lord wants us to come into His fullest. We come into God's highest. His greatest thought for His people. That we may be occupied with those high places. That we may in every sense, in the right sense, be an exalted people. And remember one thing. All God's moments are all God's movements are in that direction for His people. It is higher and higher and higher. You know, God's movements for God's people are always in that direction. So, I want to encourage everyone this morning. You know, this is the mind of God. You know, uh, as I said right at the beginning, come up unto me. Come up into my mouth. Yes. Why the mount? Yes. Come up to my mountain. That is God's call for us in these present times. Come up higher onto my mountain. Why come up to the mountain? You know, when we turn to the Bible, <coughs> you know, God's movements in revelation and purpose were connected to mountains or connected with mountains. Yes. 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 Uh, let me say that again. So often in the word of God, God's movements in revelation, God's movements in revelation. Yes, correct. And God's movements in purpose were connected with mountains. Yes. I just want to show you these examples first of all. It was so with Moses. Yes. You know, uh, turn with me to the book of uh, Exodus chapter 19. <coughs> Exodus 
Exodus chapter 19. Make them up for me. Yes. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone out forth of the land of the Egypt, the same day came they in the wilderness. Is that you for Mr. Desh to make a way just in email and detail? Yes. Who did this? Yes. And verse 3. I see. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called him out of the mountain. तब मूसा पर्वत पर परमेश्वर के पास चढ़ गया yes. और यह ने पर्वत पर से उसको पुकार कर दिया तो यहां हम देखते हैं कि किस प्रकार से परमेश्वर ने मूसा को पर्वत के ऊपर बुलाया और हम आगे निर्गमन की इस पुस्तक के अध्ययन चौबीस में भी ऐसा ही है <coughs> and he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship thee afar off. Then he said to Moses, Come up unto the Lord, Nadab, Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship thee afar off. Then he said to Moses, Come up unto the Lord, Nadab, Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship thee afar off. Then he said to Moses, Come up unto How the Lord was calling Moses up to the mountain. You know, they think he gets the kind of permission of Moses to go up on the top of the mountain. Yes. We read in verse fifteen, and Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. So, I found that when he came, he saw Moses up on the top of the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. Yes. And verse eighteen. And verse seven and eighteen, and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the Israel children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and gathered him up into the mount. And Moses was in in the mount forty days and forty nights. Is that you? 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 प्रचंड आग के समान दिखाई पड़ता था तब मूसा बादल के बीच में प्रवेश करके पर्वत पर चढ़ गया और मूसा पर्वत पर चालीस दिनों चालीस परमेश्वर ने मूसा से कहा कि ऊपर पहाड़ पर आ जाओ एंड और तू पर्वत के चढ़ के तू मेरे पास आ गया You know, and we see these expressions are not just out of the blue or just suddenly the Lord said. ये सारी जो विरक्तियाँ हैं, ये ऐसे ही नहीं कही गई हैं. You know, many a time we see we as God's people are so much caught up with ourselves. कई बार हम देखते हैं कि परमेश्वर के लोग अपने खुद की चीजों बहुत ज़्यादा उसी और फंसे रहते हैं. Mostly caught up with their own needs. आजकल अपनी आवश्यकताओं में उलझे रहते हैं. Our own problems and situations. हमारी अपनी समस्याएं और परिस्थितियाँ. My past, my future, मेरा अतीत, मेरा भविष्य. How people have failed me. कैसे लोगों ने मुझे ऐसा कर दिया. How people have hurt me. कैसे लोगों ने मुझे इतना दुख और चोट पहुँचाई. How people have wounded me. कैसे लोगों ने मुझे इतना घायल किया. How people have forgotten me. कैसे लोगों ने भूल गए. You know, many gods redeem the children of art. They caught up with themselves. इस प्रकार से परमेश्वर की बहुत से छुड़ाए हुए लोग इस तरह की बात ऑफ विद दैट व्हिच इज अर्ली सो दी की चीजों में उलझे हुए हैं बात के धरती की चीजों में उलझे हुए हैं यू नो एंड वी सी दैट अ ग्रेट नीड फॉर अस टू हियर द वॉइस ऑफ गॉड इन दीस डेज इसलिए हमें इन दिनों में परमेश्वर की आवाज को सुनने की आवश्यकता है यू नो व्हेन मोसेस वाज 40 डेज एंड 40 नाइट्स इन यू नो इन द माउंट जब मूसा 40 दिन और 40 You know, people in the valley wanted to play and relax. They abandoned all godliness. 
They forgot all that they sang and confessed to the Lord. Yes. And you remember the end of all that in Exodus chapter 32. You know, it's a terrible thing that happened out there. It ended up in a very bad situation. As they said, they abandoned all godliness. And remember the result of all that. They were drunken. They were naked. They were worshipping a golden calf. Tossing aside all restraints of the Lord. Breaking every limits of the spirit. And this is prevalent among God's people even today. Listen carefully. In the life of the redeemed, the saved, born again, and even baptized. Yes. Every limit is, is broken. Every godliness is abandoned today. Yes. It's seen in Christian writing, in Christian songs, and in many, many ways. <coughs> it is reflected in Christian writing, songs. You know, it sounds like all the leaders are saying, relax. God is a God of love. God is not hard on you. He is our heavenly daddy. We are his kids. And we all ought to have a good time with him upon this earth. Then nothing disturb your fun. You know, he is our daddy, he will not rebuke us. You know, how could that ever be the work of the Holy Spirit? Tell me. How such a counsel could ever be? originated in the mind of the Holy Spirit. You know, therefore, I want to say to God's people, if you are serious with God, God's voice to us today is come up. Come higher. Come into the wide mountain. Why mountain? We will see that a little more as we progress on God willing. But let's get this concept of God first of all. Let's get this principle of God first of all. You know, God is concerned about heights, spiritual heights. You know, when he called Moses onto the mountain, he says, the Lord said unto him, come up unto me. Yes, come up unto the Lord. And then he says, come up unto the mountain. You know, so we see, the Lord is seen in a higher place. And he is calling us out there. You know, and it was so, I'm not taking an entire Bible, but a few scriptures. It was so with Elijah when it came to Karn. You know, first Kings and chapter 18. Yes. Nineteen. 
Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophet of Baal four hundred and, and fifty, and the prophets of Rose four hundred, which ate at judgment. So Ahab said, um, sent unto all the children of bread of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. अब दूध बेचकर सारे इज़राइल ने और बाद के साढ़े चार सौ नबियों और अशेरा के चार सौ नबियों को जो इज़राइल की मेज पर खाते हैं मेरे पास कर्मेल पावर पर इकट्ठा कर लें अब तब आप ने सारे इज़राइलों को बुला भेजा और नबियों को कर्मेल पावर पर इकट्ठा किया यस चैप्टर 19 अगेन बस किंग्स चैप्टर 19 इसकी � And we will read verse 8. I have asked. Yes. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto forever the Mount of God. Yes. Now we see, even in the life of you know, uh, Elijah, he walked up to the mount to be with the Lord. You know, so we see, even when you look at the men of God, you know, the mount is a place where they met with God and had such a tremendous, you know, fellowship and communion with God. Now when we look into the life of David, as we saw in our meditations on Sundays, in 1st Chronicles chapter 21, yes, 1st Chronicles chapter 21, Verse 18. Then the angel of the Lord said, uh, uh, Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Horn and the Jebusite. And David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spake in the name of the Lord. You know, and in the following verses we see how he brought that to the price. Yes. And we read in chapter 22 and verse 1. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord. And this is the altar, altar of the burnt offering for Israel. Yes. Yes. So we see that it was on this mount the the the, the temple of the Lord was finally built. So we see even David's experience here on the mount with the Lord. Now when we turn to the New Testament, it's very interesting to see this as well. This was so with even Christ. You know, when we turn to the book of Matthew chapter 5, 
So we see here, again, John was called onto the mountain. Here the mission of New Jerusalem, the city of God, which is nothing else but the Church of Jesus Christ. So a mountain, come up unto me, unto my mountain. What is the significance of that for us? You know, surely, my brothers and sisters, it's not coincidence in the Bible. Amen. Amen. It is not a coincidence. You know, why the mountain? You know, there is something that God would like to signify by this and teach us by this in our lives. You know, it represents elevation. You know, it speaks about elevation, it speaks about something above. It speaks about the ascendancy over. It speaks about ascendancy over the earth. You know, it speaks of ascendancy over that which is of the earth, the earthly and its influences. You know, so this is what it signifies. You know, when the Lord called Moses, come up unto me, he wants him to ascend over everything that is going on on the earth. And you know that in those hours that or days that Moses spent with God, you know he was he so immersed for forty days and nights with things which are of heavenly in nature. Yes. Yes. He was so involved with the heavenly. You know, it was an ascendancy over that which is earth and earthly. And its, and its influences. It involves detachment in spirit. A, a detachment in our spirit from those things which are on the earth. <laughs> you know, it is heaven encountering the earth. Yes. The power of the heavenly to overcome. Yes. And gravity to remain above that which is earthly. Yes. A deliberation, a determination. You know, so it all would also mean that it points us to a different and another realm. Amen. How I wish this is going to be real for us. God has called us here, but we should come here and he's calling us up unto his mountain. A detachment, 
And this revelation, or Gita Bhash, and this heavenly vision, or Swarga Darshan, will have to be taken with the loins of our mind, girded with steadfast, you know, in our hearts. So, this is why we have Swarga Darshan to take this way, that we have the mind of our mind, uh, yes, uh, uh, it would be good for me to read that scripture in the book of 1 Peter. Chapter 1, 20, verse 13, I feel. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This current apni apni buddhi ki kamar bantha. Yes. Apni apni buddhi ki kamar kaska. Or sachi trekka. उस अनुग्रह की पूरी आशा रखो जो यीशु मसीह के प्रकट होने के समय तुम्हें मिलने वाला है। Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind। इसलिए अपने अपने बुद्धि की कमर बांधो। Yes। Be sober and hope to the end। और सचेत रहकर उस अनुग्रह की पूरी आशा रखो। For the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ। जो यीशु मसीह के प्रकट होने के समय तुम्हें मिलने वाली है। Yes. So there is a place of heavenly vision. So Swargiya Darshan Pali ki jagah. And a place of revelation of Prakash Pali ki jagah. That is to be taken with the loins of our mind girded. Or wo hume tam milegi jab hum apne apne buddhi ki kamar kas lenge. So good. Or such a. And with a great hope. Or ek badi paasha milenge. You know, so there is a great need. For our loins to be girded. This is a very important thing that our body is in our body. Yes. Learning necessary in these days. This is a very important thing. To gird the loins of our minds. That we are in our body. And to be sober. Or such a thing. You know, because the Lord is going to reveal His Son in greater measure in these end times. Because in our body, we are going to reveal His Son in greater measure in these end times. Now, as we heard from uh, the life of Moses, Elijah, we saw it from the life of David and even the Lord Jesus Christ. How they were all brought into that mountain, a higher place, you know, and the Lord said, come high here. Come to this place, and be with me here, and from here you will begin to see many things. I will show unto you. He was so with even John the Apostle. He saw the heavenly city. You know, so we see God always would bid his people to that place, that mountain of the Lord, to that higher place to reveal himself and his purpose. <coughs> yes. Now this is what exactly we see reflected in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Exactly you know, the letter to the Ephesians is the counterpart of Exodus chapter 34 and 35. Yes. You know, we see how Moses was called to the mount. And what happened in the mountain? God gave him 
months of times we might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth and even in him, in whom also we are obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. Now, you know, brothers and sisters, I can go on reading, but let me tell you one thing. I can go on reading, but let me tell you one thing. You know, Paul is taking us to the mountain. You know, his eyes have been opened to see this great high call and purpose of God. You know, so what we see in Ephesians is just like as the as Moses was in the mountain. As Moses was called up to the mountain, God began to reveal his purpose for his people. This holy nation, this peculiar people, this kingdom of uh, priests, how they are going to be upon the face of this earth. Don't you think that's our need today? Oh, may God 
help us to sense the need. You know, I know you all are very tired. If you are tired, I am more tired. Somebody already told me whether you are already looking tired. Well, that's okay, brothers and sisters. I am not going to go long this morning. But I would like to get this word into us this morning. That is my burden, that is my prayer for the Holy Spirit, that this word may get into our lives, that God is calling us to himself, God is calling us to a higher place, that he may come along with us while we are here in these days. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes.
is to lose that vision.
God may help us in the coming sessions. God may be his own. Thank you. Thank you.
Blessed be thy name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we all pray to God? Don't depend upon others' prayers. What is the prayer of your heart? What is your response to his word? The angel of the Lord came to Mary and declared the intention of God. And there was a response for which the angel waited. Yes. The angel waited for the response of Mary.